All right, today's question is first unique character in a string. Um, I'll show you two solutions in this video. The first solution will have some cases where it could be a little bit more efficient, so we'll try and fix it up in the second solution. Okay, so uh, in this question, like what the title says, we just want to return the index of the first unique character. So L only appears once in the string, so we return 0. And then here V only appears once in the string, so we return 2 for the index of V. In our first solution, what we'll do is we'll have a map that goes from a character to the number of times it has appeared um, in the string. And with that knowledge, we can just scan the string, and then if, if, if it's only appeared once, so if number of times equals 1, so it's unique, then return that index. Okay, so like in the earlier challenges, because this string only contains lowercase letters, instead of a hash map, we can just use a simple interarray to achieve the same thing. So here's our map. 26 letters. Okay, and now we want to read through every character. For char C and chars. And then what we'll do is we'll, we'll increment for this character that we've seen it once. And then remember here, we want to offset it by A. So that will bring us from the range of, you can see here, um, ABC has an ASCII value, and then there's 97. So you want to bring that 97 down into the range of 0 to 25. So that's what this offset is for. OK, so now we want to scan the string. So we can do that with a simple for loop, uh, chars.length. And then if map at this chars at i with the offset is equal to 1, so we've only seen it once, so it's unique, we can return i for the, for the uh, unique index. Otherwise, we're going to return negative 1 if no characters were unique. OK, so you can see here what our runtime will look like is we have O of n here for reading all of our characters, and then we have another O of n here to read it all our characters again. But in total, this is still O of n. Now, what we want to optimize is this second for loop here. So even though it's O of n, um, there's a way that we don't necessarily have to reread the whole string again for our second loop. So you can imagine that we have an example like this, where we have uh, a very, very long string with a single unique character at the very end. So by the end of this uh, first loop, we've already, we already know that A is our only, or is our first unique character. But the problem is we had to read all of this again just to double check that A is indeed the first unique one. Um, so the, the idea that we want to do in our second solution is instead of scanning the whole string, we're just going to scan uh, A to Z instead. So for each A to Z, we're going to ask, um, are you unique? And then if so, what's your uh, first unique? What's your index? And that way, we can just keep track of the minimum index seen so far and return that as the answer. So you can see here, we're just scanning 26 letters. So this is going to replace uh, this part. Instead of rescanning the whole string, we can just scan 26 letters instead and ask for each letter, are you unique, and what's your index? Um, and that will give us uh, improvement in this aspect. OK, but now we need some sort of a new map. Instead of a character to number of times it has appeared, we need some sort of map that goes from character to, uh, if unique, the index of that character. So that means our map needs to answer the question of, are you unique? and What's your index? OK, so that's defined some, some meaning to our map. So what do the values mean? Well, right now, when we initialize our map, um, everything is set to 0. So I think 0 is reasonable to mean that uh, we haven't seen this character yet. And then what we'll do is we'll define negative values in our map. So right now, let's say we have map, and then we query A. We query A for uh, the index, if we get 0, that means we haven't seen this character yet. Uh, if we get, let's say, a negative number, so let's say negative 1, that means that we've seen this character more than once. So it's no longer unique. No longer unique. 
Now, what if it's just a regular number, let's say three or something? Then that means everything else will be the first index, so the only index, since it's unique, index of this character. But not exactly, because uh, zero is a valid index of a unique character, but we've only, we already assigned zero to mean that we haven't seen this character yet. So instead of index, it's really going to be index plus one. So we'll offset it by one. So that means for an example like lead code, um, instead of map at L equals zero, which means that we haven't seen this character yet, we're going to write map at L is equal to one. And then at the very end, um, we'll just remember to offset it back by one to get our correct answer. Okay, so let's just assume we have this map and let's, let's see how we can use it. So that means if we've constructed our map somehow, and here, instead of scanning the whole string again, we can just go int i equals zero, i less than map dot length, which is, you know, has a size of 26, i plus plus. And then what we'll do here is if map at i is, let's see, greater than zero, so that means it's unique, right? So we haven't, it's not this case and it's not this case, so it's unique. And then we'll keep track of the minimum index and we'll initialize it to the biggest value that we have. And map at i is less than our minimum index, then we can overwrite it. So min index is equal to map at i. And then at the very end, we'll return uh, if min index is equal to max value, so we never found a unique index, then we'll return negative one as before. Otherwise, we'll return min index, but remember, since we stored the offset of plus one, here, we need to restore that by going minus one. Okay, so we fixed that problem, but now we actually need to go through how to construct this map. So we still need to read our whole, uh, our whole string. So that's of our characters again. And then i less than chars dot length, i plus plus. Okay, so a couple of cases that we can see here. So if map at i, uh, so i minus a, is less than zero, then we can just continue. Uh, oh, sorry, not i, it would be, let's see, we'll just have a char key equals to chars at i minus a. Okay, that makes it cleaner. So if map at key is less than zero, that means we've already seen this more than once. It's no longer unique. We don't care about it. We just continue. Otherwise, let's say uh, if map, that means map at key, it's going to be equal to, well, let's see. If we've seen it, if we've never seen it before, then it's going to be equal to the index plus one. So index plus one of this character. But what if it's not equal to zero? That means we've already seen it and now we want to set it as we've seen it more than once. So here we'll set it to be negative one. So this is the same thing as saying if map at key is equal to zero, so the first time seeing it, then we will do uh, map at key is equal to i plus one for that offset. Otherwise, uh, map at key is equal to negative one. So these this and this has the same meaning. So I'll just go with the shorter one. Okay, so I think that should be it. Let's give this a go. Oh, uh, let's see here. Char, char, key, minus a. All right, so this is now an int key instead. Okay. Cool, and we'll submit. Okay, so you can see here that we're still doing O of n here. But now this is technically O of 1. So in total, it's still O of n, but you can see that we've avoided having to read the full string a second time. So when the string is very, very big, um, this is very, very helpful. Okay, and then for the last, let's just go over a solid you know, example of how this would go. So in this version, what we'll do is we'll have our map, 
And then in the beginning, everything is set to zero. So zero, zero, all the way through. And then what happens is as we're reading this, we're going to set map at L equal to one, because that's the first, uh, that's the zeroth index, but then we plus one for the offset. And then we're going to read E, and that's the first time we've seen it. So we're also going to be one plus the offset of one. Now what happens when we see E again? We're going to go into this case where uh, it's not equal to zero anymore. So we're going to set E now to negative one, meaning that it's no longer unique. Then we'll have map T is going to be equal to, two, uh, let's see, zero, one, two, three, three plus one, um, and so on and so forth. So we have map C. And then at the, at the very end, we have this map of either uh, map. For example, A does not appear, so this will have zero. And then what we do is we scan through each letter. And then we just test here that one, this character actually exists in our string, and we've only seen it exactly once. So that's what this checks for. And then we check that this is the minimum unique index that we've seen so far. So the first unique index. OK, um, I hope that was not super confusing. But if you have questions, just let me know in the comments. All right, I'll see you on the next one.